everyone it's Terry with the covered chipboard and this video is just a quick one to show you how I created the shapes that we're using on the pinwheel mini album so these set of shapes is what I'm talking about um, let me go here first thing you need to do is go to shapes oh I'm sorry that's wrong images search under shape until you find the shape that you want to use see if I can find this one again that I used and these are free here it is uh, this one is a Cricut Access insert image and here's my shape so what I'm going to do I want to resize that to 5 by 5 click the little lock open because these aren't always um, equal on both sides Type in 5 for the width and 5 for the height. There we go. Then I'm going to lock the shape. Now I know that I'm going to need the half a shape, so I'm going to duplicate this shape by going over here to duplicate. And we'll stop. Put it out of the way there. So this shape is the one that we're going to use for the outer part, and it needs to be uh, folded, so I need a score mark. So I'm going to go back to my Shapes tool and choose Score Line. It always puts it way up here. Let's bring that down. And then I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees. Just type in 90 and hit enter and bring it over here and I want to start it right there and I want it 5 inches in width so I'll change that to 5 and hit enter and I want to select both of these and use the attach so that it attaches the score line otherwise it'll try to cut the score line and cut the shape separately so you don't want to do that. So anytime you add a score shape or a score line, you want to use attach. And here's our second shape. And I only need half of this. So I'm going to use the shapes tool again and just select a square and bring it down. Line it up at the center. Just enlarge it so that it's covering half of the shape. So this shape is already selected. I'm going to hold my shift key and select that shape as well. And if you come down here to the bottom right, you'll see slice. I'm going to slice. So we don't need the black shape. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of this one and get rid of the half. And there we have a half. And also, I want this to be a little bit smaller than half of this shape over here because this will be cardstock and this will be your pattern paper. And I want a little bit of the cardstock to show around the edges of this one. So I'm just going to slide this over, line up the middle, and a little bit off. And I'm sure there's another way of doing this, but this just seems easy to me. Just a little bit bigger, kind of a little too much there. And this a little bit more. But you just want a little bit showing. And there we go. So now I know it's the size I want it to be. So we'll slide it off to the right. So that's for these two shapes. For this orange shape, all I did was use the shapes tool. It shows a square and I'm going to unlock it the shape so I can resize it and I want it to be six inches wide by uh, four inches tall and then I'm going to lock the shape I'm going to change the color because the score line is hard to see on that dark gray I'm going to go to back to the shapes again to use another score line. And let's bring this one back up here. 
this one I'm going to make it four inches tall. I'm going to drag it over top of this shape. And again, I'm going to use my shift key and select both of those shapes. And then I'm going to go to align. And I want to align it in the center. So now I know it's perfectly in the center. And I'm going to do attach. For the second shape, I'm going to get another square shape. Bring it down and again just set it in here. Unlock the shape and resize it to what I want. Then lock the shape again. Change the color on it so you can see. And now it's just like this shape. <clears throat> so now it will cut this in one color. It will cut this in another color or separate mats. On these two, I left them the same color, even though I'm going to um, cut them from different materials. But I'll show you here what you can do. Let me get rid of these because I don't need those anymore. I'm going to click on Make It. And if I come down here to this right here is where the two shapes, again, this will be cardstock, this will be pattern paper. So I'm trying to use scraps and materials I have on hand. So there's no point in having these on a separate mat. So what I'm going to do is click on that and you see how this little blue line comes up. That means you can move it around. There are other options in here, like move to another mat, or you can hide it if you don't want to cut it. Uh, you can rotate it if you want to do that. I'm just going to move it over here to this side. So now, when I go to place my paper on my mat, I will place one 6x6 six six sheet of paper right on this side, and another 6x6 six six piece of paper on this side, or I could even use a 6x3.5 uh, scrap. I can use my cardstock over here and my pattern paper over here. Now, if you use a thin pattern paper, this could or could not work because it might cut through your mat when it goes to cut this one. It might cut this one fine and not cut this because you have two different types of material here. I use uh, basil bling paper, cardstock, or cardstock for this shape. And then a stiffer, the paper that I'm using, it's a thicker, better quality. It's not that thin, floppy paper. So it worked out okay for me. It cut both just fine. And that's all there is to it. Uh, that's how I created the shapes. These shapes were created in the same manner. And that's it. If you have any questions, just leave a comment on my blog and below the post. And I'll try to answer you as quick as possible. I will make this file available also, um, so there are, there'll be a link in the post about the mini album where you can come in and use these shapes if you want to use the same ones that I'm using. And that's it. Thank you.